Hello everybody, welcome to The Mild Rumpus. I thought this week we'd do something a little different. This past week I went home to Texas and I thought I would show you some of the highlights from my book collection there. So we'll take a look at some of the shelves and books that are stored around the house in Tejas. Okay, so there are two shelves in my bedroom. This is the smaller of the two. Up top, you'll see a bunch of knickknacks and a few Barnes & Noble collectible editions, as well as this box set of The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes. Sitting beside the shelf, you'll see a big box set of Andy Warhol's Interview Magazine. This is by far the largest book in my collection. It actually rolls like luggage, it's so heavy. Right next to that is my shelf that's dedicated to John Waters, featuring the signed electric chair. Across from that are a few art books and a vinyl figure of Jeremiah the Innocent, a character that shows up frequently in the artwork of Daniel Johnston. If you're a Supreme fan or lived in Austin, you might be familiar. This is one of the oldest books in my collection and quite possibly one of the first books, if not the first book, I was ever given, and it's in surprisingly good shape. This is what we used to do for fun kids before iPhones and iPads. This is one of many books that was gifted to me by my Aunt Ruthie. Uh, as you can see, this was an Easter gift from 1985. It was also the subject of me playing librarian. Unfortunately, this has some damage, some boxing, but I'm still really, really happy to have it in my collection. When Dinosaurs Ruled the Earth is a book that I spent so much time looking at as a kid. I was obsessed with the, the universe of energy right at Disney World and these grisly illustrations just made me a complete nerd when it came to science and paleontology. For a long time, I thought I was gonna be a scientist. And needless to say, I am a diehard Maurice Sendak fan, always have been, always will be. Uh, this is a signed copy of The Nutcracker. And when I tell you that we are Maurice Sendak stands, I ain't lying. For all you musical theater nerds out there, here is an edition of Joseph in the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat, illustrated by Quentin Blake, who is most associated with the books of Roald Dahl. And I have a couple of storybooks that were based on movies. They used to churn these things out left and right. It was major promotion for movies. You could order them through the Scholastic Book Club and all sorts of things. I don't know if they still do this. This seems to be kind of a, a relic of the past, but I'm happy to have these two of Dune and Big Top Pee Wee. And then here are a few signed editions of some childhood favorites. We got the Berestein Bears, If You Give a Mouse a Cookie, Alexander and the Terrible, Horrible, No Good, Very Bad Day, The Polar Express, and Jumanji. And then these are just some books that I feel are worth highlighting, um, just cool editions or, or books that I like. The first two are both illustrated by Ralph Steadman. This is Animal Farm. And then I also have an edition of Alice in Wonderland that's illustrated by him. He, of course, is known for his collaborations with Hunter S. Thompson. And then this is a really strange book that I have never heard a single person talk about. It's called The Geranium on the Windowsill Just Died, But Teacher, You Went Right On. It's sort of a criticism on teaching and the educational system, and it's illustrated by a variety of artists, and it's just very trippy. If you have watched my channel for any amount of time, you know I'm a big theater and film nerd. Here are a few scripts and uh, books about films that are worth noting. This is a collection of plays. Uh, it's signed by Arthur Miller, and it's also signed by Edward Albee. The Kentucky Cycle was one of my favorite plays in high school. When I was in college, I had the opportunity to work with the playwright, and of course I had him sign it. Destroy All Movies is a must-have if you are a fan of cult films or punk rock. It's basically an encyclopedia of every film that has featured some sort of representation of punk rock on film. 
features great artwork, photography, it's a must have. The bottom shelf features art books and museum catalogs. This continues onto a whole nother shelf, but that is another video for another time. Some highlights are the art of Atari that's signed by the author. This is the catalog of Matthew Barney's first exhibit that he had at the San Francisco Museum of Modern Art. And this is a signed copy of Andy Warhol's The Philosophy of Andy Warhol from A to B and back again. And the bottom shelf is just books related to music and CD box sets. Now this is the big Mamma Jamma shelf. It's just like the one I have in the House of Flimsy back home in New York. Out of all of the books I own, these are the ones that are most sentimental to me. They were given to me by my Aunt Ruthie, who really fostered my love of reading and encouraged me to do so by giving me these Reader's Digest classic books. Another highlight of this shelf would be my Stephen King and Robert McCammon books, almost all of which are first editions. Now, after those Reader's Digest classics that I showed you, Basically, the top shelf and the following two shelves are all dedicated to nonfiction books. So that includes biographies, celebrity memoirs, essays, poetry. These are just a few of my favorites. I love the work of Eric Larson. He, of course, is also the author of Isaac Storm, a book that we've discussed here on the channel. Um, but the books that you're going to see from here on out are nonfiction books that are either signed books or first editions. By far my most unique signed book would be this copy of Hardcore from the Heart. It's signed by Annie Sprinkle and needless to say, the book signing was quite an event. Now we're getting into celebrity memoirs, kicking it off with the greatest Muhammad Ali. Just like in New York, the fourth shelf is dedicated to books that are written for children and young adults. These are just a few of my childhood favorites, along with some signed editions. And here are some more semi-recent releases, a signed edition of 13 Reasons Why, and the collector's edition of that first book in the series about a boy wizard, written by she who shall not be named. I decided to use this awesome Garbage Pail Kids book as a divider between my young adult fiction and my adult fiction because I was obsessed with the Garbage Pail Kids as a child and I'm obsessed with them today. 
And now we get into the adult fiction. I don't categorize it by genre or anything like that. It's strictly by the author's last name. These again are highlights and signed editions. This is a really interesting one. Uh, it's the first edition of Weave World by Clive Barker. Apparently the first edition had a misprint on page 300. And whether we are in Texas or New York, we remain fans of all things wild. Red flag, red flag. This is one of my prized possessions. It's a signed first edition of The Bluest Eye by Toni Morrison. I did replace the book cover with a later edition. This, however, is a first edition of Beloved. The next two books are some really neat editions of Anne Rice books that I picked up when I was on vacation with my family in New Orleans. Both of these books were purchased from the Faulkner House, which is a great bookstore if you ever visit New Orleans. Some more highlights. And we'll end with one of my favorite books that features one of the worst signatures ever. Well, that does it for our little highlight reel. I hope you enjoyed that. And as you might imagine, I picked up a few more books when I was down there. So be on the lookout for a haul video very, very soon. If you're still watching, make sure you do all of the things. Feed the algorithm to help get this video out to viewers just like you. And uh, as always, I want you to stay safe. I want you to stay hydrated. Happy reading. See you real soon.